First, as you heard, we're introducing a national freeze on handguns. This means that individuals will be prohibited from buying, selling, importing, or transferring handguns in Canada. Some 55,000 new handguns have been registered on average every year over the last decade, a nearly 75% increase over that period. We're putting an end to that trend. And we are not waiting for this bill to pass to take action. Today, we table changes to regulations under the Firearms Act to bring these handgun prohibitions into force as soon as possible. We are impatient to take action. So I tabled new rule under this freeze to put it in very quickly and to deal with new handguns. takes organized crime head on. If you're in the business of trafficking guns, you'll face stiffer sentences under the criminal code. If you alter a magazine or cartridge of a gun to exceed its lawful capacity, you'll face new criminal charges. And if you're involved in organized crime, you'll face new police authorities like wiretapping to stop gun crime before it happens. Furthermore, this spring's budget dedicates additional funds to the RCMP and CBSA so they can build on the record number of illegal guns seized at the border just last year. And I will announce soon new federal rules against gun violence that will give more strength to local police. Having worked with the judicial system, I can tell you that this government is unshakable in its commitment to protect our borders, our communities, and all Canadians. Third, we're addressing the increasing role that guns play in gender-based violence. The bill will prevent individuals with a prior or current restraining order from obtaining a firearms license and will empower authorities to automatically revoke the licenses of those with a new restraining order. The bill will also... The bill also introduces new red flag laws, allowing courts to remove guns and suspend licenses from someone who poses a danger to themselves or anyone else. Following conversations we've had with women's defense groups, we are adding measures to protect the identity of vulnerable persons within the tribunals. They will simply add another layer of protection. And just last week, I issued a new mandate letter to the Commissioner of the RCMP with specific instructions to ensure law enforcement's response to intimate partner violence is immediate, particularly when a firearm is involved. There are other provisions within Bill C-21 that address straw purchasing, replicas, and the glorification of gun violence. These are responsible, common-sense measures that all Canadians can get behind. The challenges we face in our communities are pressing, and I'm calling on all colleagues in the House of Commons and all colleagues in the Senate to pass this bill as quickly as possible. Bill C-21 builds on the action we've already taken. As you heard the Prime Minister say, two years ago, we banned AR-15s and other assault-style weapons under the leadership of my friend and colleague, Bill Blair. This important decision prohibited over 1,500 models of assault-style weapons. Since then, over 300 more have been added. We also committed to a mandatory buyback program to get these weapons off of our streets once and for all. And today, I can confirm the imminent launch of the initial phase of this program as we begin consultations with industry on compensation. And we intend to publish further details about the compensation system this summer. The first AR-15s and other assault-style firearms will start to be bought back by the end of this year. It's going to be hard, but we are going to get it done. However, new specifications of assault-style firearms have entered the market that are not fully captured by the terms of the ban. 
We recognize the need to ensure a comprehensive ban on assault firearms in the legislation, which is why our government is committed to adding this to our bill through an amendment. Il s'agit d'un projet national sans this précédent. Is an unprecedented national project, but we'll make it because we want these fatal weapons to disappear from our society for good. announcement complements our significant work to stop gun violence before it starts. Earlier this spring, I officially launched the $250 million Building Safer Communities Fund. In partnership with community leaders, we're helping young people to make good choices and to set themselves up for success for life. We'll be acceler accelerating the rollout of this program over the summer. In our efforts, we must be both resolute and realistic. No single bill, including this one or initiative, will be enough to totally stop gun violence. To ensure that every Canadian feels safe in their community, we must take a comprehensive approach. Banning assault weapons, weapons action at our borders, building safer communities, and today, a new bill. Cumulatively, these efforts mark the most significant efforts at gun reform in a generation. We must fight against the violence that is caused by inaction, indifference, and inequity. We owe it to the survivors, not only who are here with us today, but to everyone who has been impacted by gun violence to do this work, and we look forward to doing it. Thank you.